Salutations, spooks, spirits, inspectors, and welcome back to more Batman Arkham Knight. I see there's a fire over there going on. I wonder if that's more, uh, firefly. Let's head on over and say hello. Oh. Wee! Yes, okay. I know where that guy is now. Definitively. I was planning on uh, making a little progress on the uh, the man bat case and the Riddler, but I see that there's already a fire broken out, so let's go take care of that. Wee! More Firefly? You're going back to jail, then. Scarecrow promised me Gotham. Tinder for my face. years ago okay maybe it was a little while ago for technically me but I need to make sure I'm good. There we go. You can't stop me, Batman. Chop will be ashes like God. Another run in with fireflies up. Just like the last time. He's attacking fire stations. Perhaps he takes their work personally, sir. Keep tabs on the other stations, Alfred. Let me know when he strikes. Ah, only one more, huh? Based on location, we'll go here first. Yeah, I did.
This place did look important, didn't it? Hello. So proud of you, honey. Go on. Tell them what you've done. Uh, <clears throat> hello, world. No, that's hollow. Oh, it's terrible. Go on. Just be yourself. Okay. <clears throat> Full genetic resplicing was a success. The recombinant molecule. Honey, you're doing it again. How about in English? Uh, yes, of course. Sorry. So, uh, what we've done. Merged the DNA of Desmodus Rotundus, uh, sorry, the, the vampire bat, into the human chain. This breakthrough could, it will, prevent and cure deafness in all humanity. How was that? Perfect, sweetie. Uh, are you getting this, honey? I think so. Is the red light on? It's the husband. Got it. Maybe it contains some answers. This computer stores all of Dr. Langstrom's research. <coughs> Mixing his DNA with a vampire bat? That was never going to end well. If I search through his files, I may be able to create an antidote to his condition. I need to isolate the man bat's signature and remove it from Langstrom's DNA. Okay, what's the problem? Oh, I see. Ah, I see it's a mini game. I didn't realize. Very simple one. Oh, I did it perfectly, I'm both. That's it. I've created a clean DNA sample. Now all I need to do is make him take his medicine. Alfred, I've synthesized a cure in Langstrom's lab. Now I just need to find him. Any idea where he may be hiding? 
He's not in control of his actions. He could be anywhere. No one knows this city better than you, Master Bruce. You'll find him. trauma to the head. Langstrom had no idea what he was doing. Uh, <clears throat> hello, world. No, that's... Oh, that's Go on. Just be yourself. Okay. <clears throat> Full genetic resplicing was a success. The recombinant molecule... Honey, you're doing it again. How about... Somehow I was expecting you. His wife, your parents. <laughs> what is it about dead relatives that turns you into a giant rodent? Kirk Langstrom and Francine Lee met as PhD students and will go on to publish a joint research paper on the treatment of human illnesses via gene splicing across species lines. Marrying soon after graduation, Kirk and Francine continue to work together despite struggles to find funding and widespread skepticism of their hypotheses. In recent years, their work has become threatened by Kirk's encroaching hearing loss, though the pair believe they have identified an opportunity in his diagnosis. White noise. Dr. Kirk Langstrom surveyed the miracle of evolution splayed out on the table before him. Desmodus rotundus, the common vampire bat. It was perhaps the most magnificent creature he'd ever studied up close, aside from Ferencine, of course. Langstrom dialed up the volume on the sound system and shut his eyes, letting Brahms' third symphony swell in his ears. The music conjured memories of happier times with his beautiful wife before his diagnosis, before the rot set in. The tinnitus had been subtle at first, like the low hum of a refrigerator in another room, a mildly irritating whine he couldn't quite place, yet couldn't quite ignore. As the weeks wore on, the noise grew overwhelming until Kirk could hear nothing un else unless he concentrated hard enough. The doctor's words, however, had been loud and clear. Kirk's affliction was rare, chronic, and irreversible. The thought of never enjoying his favorite symphonies again was agonizing, but it was Francine's voice he would miss the most, the subtle inflection she adopted when she teased him, and the way she laughed as though the little girl inside her head, inside her had never grown up. Kirk wasn't prepared to let all that go without a fight. He was a man of science, for Christ's sake, and science would find a way. The answer, Kirk knew, was staring up at him from the dissection table. And with that, we shall end it here. So thank you all very much for watching. And ciao for now. Ciao for now. <laughs>